Well, good afternoon and welcome to York. Right on the River Ouse. It's uh, Wednesday the 31st of January 2024. As you can see, the river's up quite considerably. Me for three nights. Uh, we're just staying in the travel lodge. I've stayed in it a few times before. Uh, familiar surroundings for me, this place. So, yeah. Fetch Kevin along, she's like shocked at the river levels. So, what does that mean? King's Arms pub isn't open. Here we are. There's no chance of getting the King's Arms, I'm afraid. River levels are far too high. Common occurrence here, fortunately. Right along as we look on the other side. There you go. Not too clever after the rainfall. Too bad. Aye, a shame. I was looking forward to going in that pub, but uh, I'm afraid it's not happening. Here's the oldest pub, I think, and the oldest was certainly haunted, the Golden Fleece. England's most haunted in. When it is in 2022. Time's getting on and it's starting to rain, so we're just having a little browse at the moment. The shambles. Quiet to turn. Harry Potter shop. Karen's having fun taking lots of photos. Proper nice looking cakes in there. Plus, where? Yeah. Proper Harry Potter shop. That's not in Harry Potter like, but <laughs> millions of us are. It's normally rammed this street, so it's coming to the end of the day, so it's not as uh, busy. Gin making, pick your own gin in there. Cracking little shops like. The Christmas shop, it's flipping, end of January. Honest, it's the end of the day and the market normally bustling, just putting everything away today. So it's quiet. We're just having a much, so obviously, when it's packed out. Lot different. Some more of the shampoos. Magical. Oh, all these little narrow streets. Raining, the majestic sight of York Minster. York Minster. The dusk. The walls now, this is Micklegate, <coughs> Micklegate Bar, a gate, gate house, 12th century this, and there's the bar after it. So we'll get up on the wall after we've had some breakfast, up on those steps. Just come around here, and the road gets really busy. Cabin has not a clue where she's walking, even though the weather spoon is just there. So yeah. Great structure this, and we've got others around the city which we'll walk around, hopefully get a few shots of.
You're crossing over. No. <laughs> I'm on top of this now. Got an old door. The gate to York. Out out into the Micklegate area. Early morning, just come just gone nine o'clock. Peg it up the stairs. How are we on? What's that? The cabin's a nervous wreck walking on this. So back in the day, <clears throat> the city walls was obviously a great protection from folk trying to get in and that way. Like. Some bits. I like all of the mound. But even down there, it's a good drop. I come over this bit. It's certainly a bigger drop down there. Different parts. Well protected. Cracking walk along these walls, like absolutely cracking. Some info on all these little tower bits here, city walls. You are not far from the old Bailey, one of your two Motton Bailey castles. Walk along the city walls to explore Bailey Hill, which is what remains of the old Bailey's mound. So, is that it there? I don't know. A mound's a mound. <laughs> no dogs are allowed on this. Wouldn't like to be cleaning dog crap off this anyhow. So I've got down right where the ooze is flooding here. You see, you get the path here. The road. And there's a river bank here. The road here. So obviously come up this bit as well. Cans on the top somewhere. Is it Skel is it Skelder Gate? Skelder Gate Bridge. Would have been nice to have a, a bit of a boat trip, but uh, I don't think they're on because of all this mess. Fortunately. Pretty bad like. So once over this was a toll bridge and this will be the point where you'll have had to pay to get in. And now it's a coffee shop. Is it? Yeah. And cocktails. All this parkland. Flooded too. Yeah, most unpleasant. Just been uh, say, reading the news today and it was talking about the pollution that it causes. And there's high levels of toxins and God knows what in it. Here we are, Clifford's Tower, it's come to 10 o'clock, so open and time. Brings back memories. It was age 11 last time I was up there. So it'll be almost 40 years ago. A few steps. Very steep climb up. <laughs> up we go. Just discovered me of the battery for this camera. He's dead. <laughs> She's not clever. Go 
good view from here. Inside Clifford's Tower now, York Castle. And this is the work they've done in recent years. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Folk have been chucked down there. There's loads of stuff you can read about it's history and that. It's fabulous. Really, really interesting stuff. Every nook and cranny's got a, like a little story to it. Some steps here, I'm going to get up shortly up there and have a look out. Come round. Hi. Now I'll go up the spiral steps, I think. Very smart. Up the spiral set of stairs I go. I'm starting to get dizzy going around these. <laughs> Come out to a viewpoint here. Wow. Karen! She can't hear you. <laughs> Let's go further out. All this wooden structure has been put out. Whoa. What a view! What a view! Blimey! Stunning! Minster, and all over the city. Tells you where you are and what you're looking at. You can see for absolute miles today. And there's down below. So I've had to switch to my phone now, unfortunately. You know, the battery isn't working, which is a bit of a bummer. As you can see, it just opens up here, so we'll go up to the top again in a minute. The King's Wood Train. Throwing a bog. Well, at least he had some privacy. Literally. Yeah, so there's various flights of stairs you can get up on. There's some modern ones, and they've kept the modern with the old. Loads of spots to sit like. Get a suntan on top of this. Race course in the distance there. I don't know if I can zoom it in. I'm just using my camera now, my phone camera on that. Can't keep a steady hand. Stunning views. But there's a few heads rolled in here before. Over the years. Right round. Right. Museum down here and a visit centre. And the Orvik Centre isn't too far away from here. Phoenix, one of the new castle. Here we are now at Dick Turpin's grave. 
Richard Turpin, notorious highwayman and horse dealer, executed at Tyburn, April 7th, 1739, and buried in St George's churchyard. These are a lot of old graves. A couple of hundred years old, these. That's a holiday, isn't that? Is that one? Yeah. Unfortunately, we've had. It's probably someone who's been homeless. They've had a tent and stuff, and it's gone to pot, and they've been sleeping rough in here. Quite sad. That's how it is in cities nowadays. Here's all the stuff about Dick Turpin. <laughs> you just look at that costume, you think adamant. You do, yeah. <laughs> Stand and deliver so. Like a look twice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not adamant. <laughs> and there's the city walls over there that they continue around. And there's another pub there as well. I haven't been in that one. So yeah, it's a unusual graveyard. There's only the one grave that really stands out and the rest are quite flat, all the stones. Don't mark it now. Every day of the week it's on. It's Thursday today. So. Still lots of stuff, plenty of hats and that on here. Street food. Loads of stuff. And not surprisingly, Kevin is looking at handbags. You want another handbag for a change? Yeah. <laughs> handbag fetish you've got like. That's the entrance, just come out so, to the Shambles Market. Good stuff on in there today. I've got myself some, some more chilli stuff, which is no surprise. Put that into the uh, square now. Colin's enjoying some of this pan pipe music. So there's loads of streets you're walking here and you miss loads as well, so it's absolutely loads, it's endless. The streets down here haven't been down yet, or down there either. On previous visits, loads to discover. That's one of my favourite boozers in York, York is novel. Lendl Cellars goes down into caverns, it's fab. It's next to Tomahawk, big steak bar. But yeah, I'm probably popping here later. This is Lindell Bridge. Lindell Tower here, dating from 1300. And the river's still high. Beautiful structure that like come across and that's been made into a little coffee shop. Yeah you can't have a walk along there unfortunately, you can over here. Would have been nice to have a, a cruise as well but uh, the boats are off limits at the moment with the water. There's the Maldings pub. I'm going there later. So we're heading to the Railway Museum next. Was it Railway Museum now? National Railway Museum. Some stunning, stunning classics in here. And this is just the start. Absolute beauties. I'm liking this because this will have been a horse drawn. One back in the day, Liverpool Manchester Railway Company. This will have been like for your first and second class, and you're sitting outside 
with a beam in this one so you're open to the elements so this was used on barrel line furnace railway a statue of George Stevenson those old enough to remember the rocket he created back in the day what I like in here is the trains of yesterday all up there I went on the front of them, all the plaques. Not picking up very well in the light in here actually at the moment. I'll pick them one or two up. But yeah, some of them's too dark. <coughs> United Dairies. Really old, this another gauge carriage from 1898, Linton Barnstable Railway. <laughs> it looks like an allotment shed, <laughs> if you didn't think. <laughs> that is a vintage carriage. Intercity Express programme train. Cockpit. But I am going to go over to what I wanted to say a replica of the rocket. Stunning. Come a long way from the days. Things like this. Wow. There's a little tiny engine here. Bet. Bless. Equivalent of a forklift truck, it says there. <laughs> Very dainty. Very dainty. Eighteen sixty-five. Just looking at another carriage now. The interior. It's quite tricky to see. But the upholstery is still impressive. This was based on Southern Railway. This carriage. I love stuff like this. You know, you can easily get like six to eight people in this. No bother. Alone. This little dainty thing, Living, Livingston Thompson, got a good name. Some of the Festinio Railway in Wales. 1885. Dynamo meter car. So this wasn't kind of your yeah, standard carriage, it has all sorts of stuff in it studies and like a lab it's fascinating pop it up look in there's all sorts of different stuff in here and next to it oh i shouldn't say getting pulled is a very familiar train the mallard i've got to get up Oh yeah, what a beauty, look at that, thing of beauty this, P 
picture perfect steam engine this like for me he was young you seen this one of my favorites ever on be train sets the intercity 125 it all depends what area you're from and yeah just yeah just a beauty this is 40 years they were going and this one's run on the Great Western Railway about look of it It is being like a kid in a sweet shop, really. <laughs> you see all these trades. The uh, Flying Scotsman is supposed to be due back here at the museum, be out on duty, but I haven't come across it yet. It'll be somewhere. So yeah, great facilities here, like the museum. Cabins down there. I've just had a cuppa. This video here, the first creations of the bullet train, Japanese. You can go in this one, the markings on there. Look in this one. I wouldn't know, never flown, I don't want to. <laughs> this has got a couple of seats in, but yeah, yeah. Big. It smells of hospital. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, this is weird. And it doesn't feel like a train, this. Yeah, so I can see where Cavern's coming from. Fascinating. Shinkinson. That's what it's called. Absolutely fascinating. Well, there's no doubt this is the biggest steam engine in here. It is absolutely enormous. It's called KF7 and it was 1935. It's huge. Just like comparing it with the other old steam engines, it's. Wow. Just powerful thing of beauty. Largest locomotive in the collection and the largest ever built in Britain, it says. It was designed for a line in China that had steep hills and weak bridges, so if needed to be large and powerful without putting too much weight on the axle. It ran until 1977 and 1981. The Chinese government gave it back to the National Railway Museum. It's some big baby. The Flying Scotsman. Just arrived the other day. Silence is in awe. Gorgeous. And these little seats. And there's your call. Buffy car 1937, all the Silver service, tea and stuff. Which obviously was pulled by the Flying Scotsman. Well, this is its proper home now. All sorts on this platform. 
Memorabilia everywhere. Fantastic. Oof. So much memorabilia in here. <laughs> Unreal. Huh? Beautiful. There's no diesel. British railway, oh, railway, <laughs> railway class <laughs> 31. <laughs> Lovely. And above there, I'm not even going to try and say Lanfair PG, that's what we called it. I mean, this is just a stunning range of memorabilia in here, like. this alone it's just look at the wow factor if you like trains <laughs> models all sorts there's even models of stations ships just loads of seats benches it's all kinds Incredible. So much. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And you're getting for now. Brilliant. Magic model railways. A few of nostalgia. Come here. Stand here all day. Lovely models. Another bit. If you're local, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mark Taylor's in Workington. He used to have a great model selection like this upstairs. But everyone remembers the first train set. Right, we're on day three. It's windy. Just outside York Minster, we're going in. So, we'll get some shots inside. It's proper windy. Well, here we are inside of York Minster. And this is a list of the bishops and archbishops. Dating back a long time. Move it over here. Yeah, 2020. We've got Deans of York. And this is dating back from 1093. Wow. All the way. 2020. <clears throat> I always wanted to come in here over the earth. I'm glad I have. It's been a last. Just huge. I'll end up going down there in a bit. But I'm gonna zoom in like. Oh well, I'm right down the middle now. It's just huge. The work's just incredible, and to think this got like ruined in the 80s. 
and to be built back up again. The work that's got into it is phenomenal. So we're up near the uh, altar now in this area. <clears throat> it goes right back there as well, which we'll have a look at in a bit. Just vast. Now, I can do my speech in <laughs> a building this size. And in here we've got a smaller area, a prayer area. Galapoli, Ein, a Translotte, France and Flanders gates. St George's Chapel, Regimental Memorial Chapel of the Prince of Wales, Own Regiment of Yorkshire. This is obviously dedicated to the forces. Look at the work that's gone into this, just incredible. Officers' names. This one's from African War, 1899, 1902. Come further back now. So I'm not saying much. I'm just enjoying taking it all in. Just the workings are incredible. Walter de Grey, Archbishop here, 1215 to Facing up on the roof here, we look across. Each of these like gold and red sculptures, everyone's different. Camera can zoom in on them. There's just a couple. But they're all over the roof, sailors. I bet the sound system in here is incredible. <laughs> and this bellows off. Whew. Be attached to a monster organ, that. <laughs> wow. Coat of arms at the top there, this point. A bit dark in here. Where I'm at, so it's not picking it up. So I've just been through a bit. It's all about St Cuthbert, his life and where he was and lived. A little bit here. And the areas. The coffin went to working. Been there, we told. And obviously we've based a lot the Farne Islands in that area and all the connections down here, Ripon, York and of course Cala Look at the floor here
you'd have to be good at your history with all this stuff like just so much to take in and as we pan round just vast look at tainted windows well this is the great east window it's absolutely phenomenal. The detail. Top to bottom. Brilliant. How far can I zoom in? Every single pane is different. It's a top one. Back down. Going down into the crypt. Wow. What's this say? Ashes of General St John Maxwell, died February 1st, 1929. Oh wow, look at this. It's font on here. Yeah. Look at the beauty of this font. names stunning <laughs> get on little altars over here three altars Below you can see the remains from the Roman fortress. Down below. The column base is from a column of the house for the commanding officer dates 4th century. Green wall is part of the curved rent only ago. Okay. Push it 20p in front. I'll try and push it down. I'll push it down, it's not down my bottom. <laughs> can't, it's just a can't. Okay. Things you've got to do. stone in here. This is a tomb. Tomb of St. William. Patron Saint of York. You definitely feel like you're underground. Another vast area. Wow. Every area is completely different. Just pan round here, look at this. Absolutely incredible. Something else. Just oh wow. Yeah. 
all the arms, coat of arms and stuff for each person that was there. Right along. It's so well kept and looked after. Look at the work on that. That's somewhere else up there, like. What a place. What a special place this. Is. It's one of these once in a lifetime places you can come. You're just in awe of everything and that's, that's how I feel today. Just phenomenal. This must be another. I think that's connected to like organs, but these are like more modern. But look how tall they are. I'm actually running out of words. You know, yeah, there's just so much to say. You just can't film it all. Well, I could, but it would be a long, long video. The astronomical clock. Yeah, memorial to the men of Royal Air Forces working from bases in Yorkshire, Durham and Northumberland who were killed during the Second World War. And a bit round the back on it. With sanctum. That's four sides. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Yeah, look at the sculptures on top. Very unusual. All on these is names, names of the women of the empire who gave their lives in the war of 1914 to 18. In whose memory, the five sisters. Window was restored by women. all over the world. A lot of names. Now this is a chapter house area. All the names of archdeacons, different sort of church going folk, religious folk are connected to this. Just beautiful. Colours. Again, try and pan around to each window. Work 
workings are incredible. Never seen how like it. Flooring as well. All these heads, <laughs> all different. A couple of animals thrown in. <laughs> oh, there's a gargoyle. There's a pig somewhere up there. Definitely a pig there. This is the small chapel of St. John's in more memoriams. From around the world as well. All our names. It's got 1914 on. And they're from 2007. The Roll of Honour from 1968 till 2007. These books. I'm just in the uh, Coppergate area. Where the Jorvik Centre is, the Viking Centre up here, not going in it. Tell them just how the deeks about in Phoenix, Primark. Not to know how many churches are actually in York altogether. Uh, we haven't paid to go in the Jorvik Centre, so maybe do it another time we come. This is where it's at. It's 15 quid to get in that. If anyone was wondering, it's 18 quid to get in York Minster and it was 7.50 the Clifford's Tower. So I've come back on my own after a bit of shopping with Karen and I'm going to walk a bit of the wall. So that way would have been Bootham Crescent if I remembered right. So the walls used to come along here. That was Abbey something. Remember the word Abbey was mentioned on that. There's the art gallery. And below us is the old Bootham Bar. So I'm going to try and walk around the walls, around the back of the Minster. There's another pub down there. I'm sure it was called White Horse, if I remember right. But yeah, when York used to play down there, we walked down and turned off right. But anyhow. Hi Peter Gert this is. Another impressive like gatehouse this was. Some more old steps up there too. And get along the walls again. Some fab views. <laughs> Badger. I can't remember if we went in this 2015 not trip. This side you can see a different side to the Minster in that direction. 
very different from middle of town. Some nice buildings over this side too. More housing over this side now. This does present its views. For me a nice little viewpoint here. I'm sitting right in front of the castle. Castle? Minster. God, I've only had one today. Get a grip mark. It's less windy over this side too. All oh, the areas of this great cathedral, fabulous. And down below, there's some buildings being squeezed in. Normally you'd think allotments in this area, but no. <laughs> Looks like they're building something, houses. They've squeezed them in now. As we look back, uh, just on the end, that's the corner there. Um, there's two guide and a crowd. So I would have filmed there, but I uh, didn't want to spoil this thunder. Uh, so I'm about to come down off the top of this one. Uh, Monk Bar. Where's the bar? This is what this bit's called. So I've had to come down. Can't get across for some odd reason. So up the stairs we go again, back onto the walls. So on the map, I'm here. Monk Bar. So I'm going to come back around now. I was down here yesterday. We went back into town, so I've still got this bit. I'll walk back around. So I'm doing all right, it hasn't took long. So it runs out here for a bit, and to add, you've got to just got to follow the city walls. It is Red Tower, so I'm going to follow the signs to that. So it'll be down there. The River Foss is down here. But I'll just see how we get on. And I'm presuming this is a Red Tower, <laughs> as it's a different layout of brick to the rest of the wall. Yeah. It is. We've got a sign. So, nice rest of walk up there. The Red Tower, built in 1490. Next stop is One Gate Bar. Then you've got Fisher Gate. After that, so one needs to crack on and get so to get back because we're going for scrum at five o'clock. Right, on we go. Just a reminder if you've got dogs with you, unfortunately, not a lot on the city walls, but you could do a different kind of route on ground level with dogs, I reckon. So you're still going in this square. Well, this is the Walmgate bar, tall bar, what it would have been into the city. Very nice. Again, that looks like it's got a little cafe on board. There's the sign. One gate bar. So, as you're walking along the wall as well, it takes you past the York Barbican, um, where they have events, music events, all sorts of stuff. Snooker as well, I'm sure they do. Well, looks alright. I wonder if it's just like a, like an amphitheatre inside. Or does it go right back? I'm not sure. I'd have to have a look. And this one is the Fisher Gate Bar. Slightly smaller than the other points on the route. But yeah, it, it looks a bit more pedestrianised because it's a dead end here. And we've got bollards. Back at Post Poston Gate now. I'm not going for a cheeky pint because I have got to get back. So this was the point yesterday went over there, Dick Turpin's grave, so I'm going to walk back along the wall on that side now and back to base. Fishing Gate Tower this is actually. The Spoons is Boston Gate, it's all connected with you. That's where we are. Tavern Lodge and the Spoons underneath, what more do you want? The budget, budget drinking and sleeping. So I'm just finishing my walk off now, just back round, that's the principal hotel, it's huge. And York Station and York Tap just behind. 
Looks like a cycle shop down there as well. So there's a pan round the walls. Just got to head back down there and then back to the hotel. So it's been a lot of cork of a walk. So, little bonus, right outside the travel lodge here is a phoenix of the annual ice trail that they have. But, uh, it's really mild this morning and it's going to melt. See, dripping away. Beautiful though. Right, that's the end of our York adventure. I've uh, been to plenty of places the last couple of days so we're knackered now so I'm just packing up and getting ready to go back off to Cumbria so thanks for watching everybody I'm not knackered I'm not knackered he's old anyhow I'll see you up next and it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from her bye see you up next then